Good morning. So this is a garden update. Just want to show you, this is where I sit once in a while to watch my new garden over here. In the middle there is a solar bird bath that works pretty darn good. When the sun shines on it, it just goes all day and the birds love it. On this arch, I have red scarlet runner beans. And the left side is doing better than the right side. And I think that's because the right side gets more sun than the left side. And I don't think red scarlet runner beans like 12 hours of sun beating down on them. So I might rethink that next year. But in these raised boxes here, the white ones, I have patty pan squash with a flower growing there. At first I thought that flower was from a nasturtium, nasturtium, because <laughs> I have those in the garden too. But it's a patty pan flower and I see some other buds coming up in there also. That's exciting for me. I never grew this type of squash before. The only thing I've ever grown was uh, zucchini in the back garden. And I don't know if you remember my last video of this zucchini that was infested with aphids. It turned out this whole box was. I had to uh, fix the soil a little bit. And I pretty much babied this zucchini by spraying it with neem oil, Dawn liquid soap, water mixture. Spraying it pretty good, rinsing it off with water spraying it again with the mixture. New growth started coming out and I cut off the curling infested leaves and now look at this, it's doing good. It's a little late in the season, but of course, you know, it's gonna be good it's still July. This zucchini too was not doing so well, but not as bad as the other one. But this one's doing great, making a comeback. So I'm really happy this bed is going to survive. In this bed I've got some cantaloupe melons. First time trying those. I might have put too many seeds in here, but we'll see what happens with that. Over here I have some dill that is flowering and I planted dill next to the cucumbers because I want to pickle some of the pickling cucumbers. This is flowering, but I've harvested a ton. I've got some in the freezer, I've got some in the house, and water that's still hanging in there. But that was way ahead of the pickles, cucumbers. So on the left here, I have the pickling cucumbers, and on the right, slicing cucumbers. These two were not doing great in the beginning of the season. They were yellow. I had to spray them with um, fish emulsion and Epsom salt mixture. And I got that idea from Gary at Rusted Garden. Gary's zone six, I'm zone seven, he's in Maryland. I'm on Long Island. And we're very similar in uh, weather, I guess, and seasons. But he's got some great tips, so I recommend anybody go to his channel, see what he's got to say if you don't already. But the red scarlet beans are doing good. And I've got flowers all up the trellis. And it's going up, up, up. And it's actually coming over, which will be fine because I'm not so sure why well, these guys are shy. <laughs> I'm not growing so fast, but sorry for the messy carport shot. All right, so I have about, I think, 14 tomato plants here in the front. I have uh, early girls, some Rutgers, in the middle I have big boys, three big boy plants.
to spilling with tomatoes. And in this back row, I have big beefs. Now these, oh, I'm sorry, not big beefs, beef steaks. These beef steaks, I think, are ripening too early. They're not the beef steaks I remember. Uh, we had a heat wave, and I think they just started ripening and not growing. So I got about six tomatoes off, and we've ate them already, and they were delicious. They weren't big, but they were decent size, but not beef steak size. So this is like a, turned into a tomato jungle here. See, there's a big one in there and some little ones around it. I'm constantly trying to thin out branches to get some sun in here. Didn't realize this was going to turn into such a jungle, but they seem to be happy. On the end here I have a cherry plant, cherry tomatoes. And it's covered, 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 covered. And it's a little bit taller than me. I don't know if I should start topping these off or what. Back there I also have uh, some beef steaks growing. Planted them later. But this cherry tomato is blocking my path. On the left here I have my sugar snap beans. And they're kind of near the end of the season, but I can still harvest some off here. Nice small, sweet sizes. On two trellises, which were not tall enough. I think I'm going to grow them on arches next year. And then next to them are Alaskan, Alaska peas, which was only supposed to grow two feet. So I had this little trellis here for them, <laughs> but as you see, they grew just as big as the sugar snaps. And they're hanging over. Now these peas are the sweetest peas I've ever tasted in my whole life. Delicious. I mean, you need about 10 to 12 of them per serving. And I don't know if I'm lazy or whatnot, but to be shucking this, the peas out of them, I don't always have the time or patience. But the sugar snaps, you don't have to shuck them or whatever. You can just pan fry these. They're pretty darn good. So this is the tomato garden, gone wild. I did have some chard here, which is harvested. I had some garlic in the back, harvested. This is my cabbage that I started last October under the hot the hoop house. And it's finally getting a decent head on it. It's got minimal pest damage, but I keep a good eye on that. I've waited so long for that, I don't want anything to happen to it. It's actually again, almost taking a year. And they're called early cabbage, so I don't get it. <laughs> But because I thought the cucumbers and the zucchinis in the front were not going to make it, I planted some more. So back here, in this container, I have some pickling cucumbers on the left and slicing on the right. And over here, on the right, I have some more zucchini. And then I planted some spaghetti squash here. I actually had to buy some more trellis type things. Uh, because this is really reaching out and this, these are not big enough. So I'm going to add another trellis there. Put some cardboard on the ground in case they sprawl out. And here is the sunflowers, the mammoth sunflowers that I got from Donna at Rainbow Gardens. 
and um, they're slow growing but I have them in this raised bag garden bag and uh, I don't think they're happy there next year I'll put them in the ground so this is a cherry tomato on the left and behind it is a beefsteak. It's just extra tomato plants I had. I just had to find dirt to place them in. I also have this area here where I'm killing some grass and I'm going to maybe plant something else. I don't know, this year, maybe next year. I also have some yellow banana peppers grown here. Again, I didn't know where to place them. I didn't want to put them in containers. I ran out of containers. But they're doing good here. They're flowering. Um, I had ordered some topsoil, and it turned out to be sandy topsoil along this fence here. So it's not the best, but the peppers seem to be doing okay. I have more peppers in containers. over here and of course more tomato plants couldn't seem to not plant them so I ran out of dirt put them in containers they kind of dry out pretty fast so I have to keep an eye on them and water them often these peppers are doing good in the containers I have uh, red peppers orange peppers normal jalapeno peppers and then I have hot big guys which are a jalapeno type but they get big so I have these that are about four inches I'm not sure if they're gonna get any bigger I gotta read up on them again I might be able to harvest these but the peppers seem to be doing good I bottom feed them in these containers because I heard that's what they like I have red potatoes in here, red skin potatoes. The leaves are starting to turn a light color, so I think they're dying off, which is a sign they're almost ready. This is a rain barrel my husband made me. It's a food grade barrel, and uh, comes in very handy. The hose has a problem reaching this far. Lemon verbena from my oil infusion. lemon verbena. Over here is another cherry tomato plant. Now, my cherry tomatoes that I've always grown in containers in the past never got higher than the third rung of a tomato, a small tomato cage. But the cherry tomatoes this year seem to be going crazy, which is good. But, uh, I hope they're doing, I hope they're not going to get too much bigger. I don't know if I should top them off also. I have some barrage in here too, just to stick some seeds somewhere. Over here, I have sweeties. They're so cute. And I think they're going to stay small. I hope they do. And this plant is covered in them. Now I never cage these, so I do some twigging. And I got the twigging idea from Lark's Perennials at Tea Time Tuesday, where she takes some strong twigs and puts them in the ground and props up flopping flowers or vegetables. So I have these two sturdy twigs that are Y format, holding the plant up because they were flopping over. And you hardly see them. It's called twigging. I love it. This is another seating area where I had my coffee this morning. And while I was sitting here looking at my Blue Lake pole beans, I was didn't realize they were growing over the top because I don't think they were yesterday 
but they are doing fabulous. <laughs> and there's flowers all over them. I think I'm going to get a lot of beans. Makes me very happy. I'm, a, I'm big on beans. I usually buy the frozen ones from Trader Joe's. But I haven't had to buy vegetables all late spring and summer between the kale and the bush beans. So, I had one strawberry on here that I ate yesterday. It was delicious. I see another one growing here. I was thinking of saving it for my husband, but I just might be too tempted to pluck that one today for myself. <laughs> I have uh, four tomato plants here. The one on the left is the one and only Brandywine, which is flowering. Looking forward to those. I have my Ichabon eggplant. Let me come around the other side. I've harvested two so far and they were delicious. Just sliced them up, put them in a little a pan with a little bit of oil, get them a little crispy, sprinkle them with salt and it was just perfect that way. They're kind of small. I think this one is ready. But I do have some more flowers coming through. I'm going to plant more of those next year. They're like the Japanese kind. They don't have a lot of seeds, which the seeds tends to irritate my throat. It's like the only thing I'm allergic to, I think. So those are pretty cool. The grow bags, they just dry up so fast. I'm not so sure I'm going to use them again next year. Over here is where I had my garlic that I harvested on the 4th of July. And now I've planted some patty pan squash, which you see is coming up there. And to the left of that, I planted some doll baby watermelons. They should be coming up soon. They have a longer season, but if I run out of time, I'll hoop house it and try to extend it. And it's the first time, of course, growing those. This is my kale garden that I harvest every day for my smoothies, and it just seems like they grow back so fast. The leaves, I just cut off some leaves. And uh, same thing with the lettuce I grew. The cut and come again, so they just amazes me how the next day looks like you didn't even cut any. So I have the blue curly, then have the red Russian, and our favorite is the red Russian. We have the Italian kale, I forget the name, it was an L, uh, but it's also called dinosaur kale, and that was pretty good too. You know, so those are our green smoothies for breakfast every day. This garden I have to clean out. This is going to be the fall garden. I'm going to do some more lettuce. As you can see, the lettuce on the left is all bolted. It's a little bitter, but I'm still harvesting some for the BLTs, for my delicious tomatoes. <laughs> and we also have some volunteer tomatoes in here. I don't know what they're going to be. So I like the mystery of it, so I'm going to let them go. And I have three more cabbage here that I planted the same time last October as the one in the new garden. They're a lot smaller. These are in the ground. And uh, we'll see how they go. And of course these are called early girls, but I think they're going to be taking over a year to get a decent head. We'll find out. This was the cilantro that I'm letting to go to seed and I'll get some coliander. You harvest these when they turn brown. And, um, I have a feeling I'm going to be battling these for the rest of my garden life. I also let some um, little mini carrots go to seed. I'm going to harvest those for next year. Those were pretty good. I made some cream of carrot soup last year that was so delicious. But. And I love the flowers. I just love these. So I have to collect those seeds. 
soon. Got some onions growing over there. I had beets along here and they did not do well at all. It's just so tiny. Except for maybe that one, but I don't think there's beets in there. I did harvest some leaves for the smoothies, but that's nothing to write home about. Over here, where my foot is, I had six red romaines, which served us well in our salads. I got some more barrage. These flowers taste like cucumbers. And the bees actually love these too. And over here is what I call the half moon garden. Let me back up. I just added this on the end because I needed a space to put some herbs. So this is my herb garden that I call the half moon garden. It's like a half moon shape. And I put a lot of white flowers around it. This bird bath here, I put in the black tire because the black tire supposedly keeps the water from freezing soon or in the winter from the heat of it and it's not too shabby looking but I have a solar pump in there which should be going off about now because it looks like the sun is on the solar panel sometimes the pump collects the leaves and things so let's see yeah I should get going soon. Sometimes this has to get cleaned off. All right, I'll have to check that out. Anyway, I got a lot of herbs in here. I have rosemary, and I have some chamomile. This chamomile I actually found growing in the grass, and it's definitely chamomile. You see when the petals are facing down, that's when you harvest them. So if I pulled one right now and smelt it, it would smell like honey. So that's the chamomile test. There's another one over there struggling a little bit, but I think they like dry soil. Not too much watering. I have sage. This is a salvia. I have some more. Uh, Swiss chard over here. I have some thyme growing here, and I'm gonna have some um, the red nasturtium vining type flower coming up here. This was a vine that doesn't seem to be doing good that was in there, so I planted those other seeds. I have some lemon basil, some regular Italian basil. Um, midnight May, May night, meadow sage, bees love it, just disturbed one. Another type of sage, sage, oregano, sage, purple basil, it goes green, it goes dark purple, it goes green again, so right now it's switching colors, I don't know why it does that. These are my bush beans. I had a good harvest out of it, so I planted more seeds because you see that plant somehow got damaged. I tried to tape it up because that was the one that really produced and was still producing. Somehow it snapped, but couldn't save it. But I planted more seeds. Bush beans are good for succession planting. My trellis broke. I don't know how that happened, but I gotta fix that today. Didn't have much luck in the flower garden this year. Got some Cosmo over here. Just flowers once in a while. I do have some tall phlox that looks like it's starting to bloom. 
and I have uh, some St. John's wort next to that that's flopping. I have to pin that up somehow. Maybe I'll do some twigging, some catmint, some margarita daisies down here. And some rose campion. Another phlox that's coming up. Those irises never bloom this year. They usually do every year. I don't know what happened. Oh yeah, this is new. I forget the name of it. You guys probably know what it is. Oh, lantana. These are some lantanas. Doing really good here. I hope it's a perennial. That would be nice. I planted some forget-me-nots. And uh, they're coming up. Not so good. I have this tree over here that seems to drop leaves all season long. I'm not crazy about that. I really don't remember that in the past. But I don't know if it's a dying tree or if it's just one of those trees that constantly drops leaves. But I do want to keep shade here, so I really don't want to take the tree down. Anyway, so this is my garden update. I'm real happy with the garden this year. I love sitting in spots and different spots and just checking out the garden, planning already for next year and seeing what needs to be done this year. Spot something, fix it. But finally enjoying it because it's hard work getting these ready. But I love it. I do have a garden in the back corner, a shade, shady area, that I'm calling my meditation garden. But it's kind of neglected. I have a hydrangea over there coming up. I have some hostas. Lily of the Valley, where somebody ate the little bells and I never saw the bloom. A little frog house called the Hop In. And I do have a little pond here with a couple of goldfish in there. But uh, I would like to fix this garden up for next year. Well, maybe this year, we'll see. Well, that's the garden tour for today. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.